But now to the Cleveland kidnapping case that's made headlines around the world. One of the victims, Amanda Berry, made her first public appearance at a concert there on Saturday night. That one day after Ariel Castro agreed to a plea deal that will put him behind bars for life without parole plus 1,000 years. His son, Anthony Castro, is with us now exclusively. Anthony, good morning. It's good to see you. Good morning, Savannah. Well, let's start right there. What do you think of the sentence your father got? Did he get what he deserved? I think is the best possible sentence. Um, I think that if he really can't control his impulses and he really doesn't have uh, any value for human life, uh, the way this case is shown, then behind bars is where he belongs for the rest of his life. The prosecutors did consider the death penalty in yes. this case. Would you have been okay with that punishment? It would have been tough to accept uh, just because uh, death penalty cases um, are you end up in court a lot, uh, and so they, they come back um, a lot more often. Um, I think this way is a lot better because, you know, he's put his, himself away and he will be um, away for the rest of his life. Would you ever visit him in jail? Right now, I can't see any scenario where I would go visit him. I, you know, he's been lying to his family for the past 10, 11 years um, at every possible turn. Uh, I have no no trust in him. I can't I can't see myself going to visit him and, and giving him uh, the opportunity to uh, face me and lie to me again. Let me take you back to that day in May when the world found out that he had been keeping these three women captive for a period of more than 10 years. What was your initial reaction? Well, I first found out that um, the girls had been found. Um, Michelle, or, I'm sorry, Gina and Amanda had been found. Um, and it wasn't until a little bit later that details started to come in. So my first feeling was, you know, overwhelming joy because this was a case where, you know, it, it captivated our city for, for so long. Um, and, you know, it was shortly thereafter where my father's name and, and picture uh, started to come out. And, uh, you know, it really became real to me when um, the 911 call started to be played and I heard Amanda Berry um, say his name, and that was the, the toughest moment, and that's when it became real. Were you shocked? I was shocked because of the magnitude of such a crime. I, I don't think I could imagine anyone doing that, let alone to find out it was, you know, my own flesh and blood, my father. Um, however, you know, I did uh, grow up in a it's house a with a lot of fear and a lot of violence, and... Um, so the fact that this was uh, a violent case, um, no, it didn't surprise me. Because you have talked about that. Gr growing up, you were abused. Your mom was terribly abused, according yes. to you and your siblings. Tell me about what it was like to live under his roof. Incredibly strict. Uh, he had a temper. Um, he wasn't, you know, a monster 24-7. But if you crossed him, you know, there would be consequences, and those you know, more often than not, would be physical com consequences. Um, you know, I I remember crying myself to sleep when I was a kid because I'm I was you know my legs are covered in in uh, welts from belts. You know, and um, seeing my mom getting getting beat up in in, in our own home, and uh, no one should ever have to see their mom you know crumpled up in a corner in the floor the way I did so many times. So many people have wondered whether anyone in the family could possibly have known. Had you been inside that house on Seymour Avenue during the time period when we now know these three women were being held? Yes, I had been there a few times. Um, more, more often than not, on the outside only. Uh, but when I did go in, in the house, uh, I would always enter through the back door. That's where my father would flag me in. Um, and we'd talk in the kitchen. Uh, we'd be there 15, 20 minutes. Did you ever see any signs that in retrospect you wonder about? I mean, did he have locks on the doors, that kind of thing? Well, the locks on the doors weren't unusual. Even when we lived there, there were locks on the basement door, the attic door, the garage was locked, windows were nailed shut. When you were a child, there were yes. places you just couldn't go? Absolutely. When you think about what these women have gone through, does it haunt you? It does. Um, it's been about a little less than three months since we've learned about all this, and it's been a three-month nightmare. Um, you know, obviously, 
nowhere, nothing to compare to what uh, the girls went through. But, you know, this has been um, incredibly hard. Do you think about the fact that this is your father, this is your flesh and blood? Is it hard to handle being related to someone who is capable of such cruelty? Absolutely. Um, and, and what's horrifying is, you know, I have the same first and last name. Um, I look at the look in the mirror and, you know, I see the resemblance and um, I think about what he did and how horrible it was. And I just can't help sometimes just being overcome with that. Your mom would have turned 50 tomorrow. Yes. In some ways, do you think about this as justice? for her and what she went through, the fact that he will now spend the rest of his life in prison? I do. I really do. I think that she will be there. Um, the first morning he wakes up in prison, you know, and the sun shines down, that's going to be her justice. It wasn't easy for you to come out, speak publicly, to show your face. Why did you want to? What message would you want to send? I really wanted to thank the people that were the closest to me and helped me through this. You know, um, my best friends and my coworkers have been incredibly understanding and have been there for me. Um, and I really want to thank them for that. And I also want to just express how happy I am that um, because of all this, my father will never be able to hurt anyone ever again. And if you had anything to say to him, what would it be? I have nothing to say to him. Anthony Castro, thank you for being here this morning. We appreciate thank it. Thank you.